so just uh, um, I thought to give you a flavor of what I do instead of going to dive into deep details uh, of my research, which may not lead anywhere with the device diversified of uh, um, audience. So my work is mainly in the area of electrical vehicles. And now we're also dealing with some autonomous driving vehicles. So my work is how to make them work better or more efficient and safer. Um, as I go, as uh, many of you know that uh, the society, uh, in my opinion, will probably face a number of important issues. One is the, the energy, and the other is the environment. And also we have a societal issues I'm gonna mention that you know, um, we kill roughly 1.4 mil uh, 1.2 million people every year in uh, car crashes, not including all those um, people injured and with disabilities and so on. So from the energy wise, uh, we rely mostly on uh, coal or, uh, for electricity, and then we rely on oil for transportation. And in transportation, we mostly have cars that consumes roughly, I think I have the figures, uh, if you look at the U.S., we have roughly um, motor, motor oil, uh, so gasoline is 6.9 billion barrels, which is roughly 61% of the total oil that we produce. And then the rest will be using for uh, airplanes and other industries. And a lot of people predict that the oil is going to deplete at some point. We don't know when, maybe 40 years, maybe 50 years, or maybe 100 years. But at some point, we're going to run out. So that's the point. If we run out, we have to get prepared. And we, uh, for electric vehicles, that's one way that we mitigate that. Uh, we mitigate, uh, we can use uh, other methods to gener generate electricity for the uh, electric vehicles. So that's one. And also from an environment perspective, and we generate a lot of CO2s and other pollutants, um, which cause uh, issues like climate change. And I know not everybody agrees with climate change, but I do because you look at the, uh, the hurricanes that we have this year, and it's just one by, uh, followed by another. And also the flooding, I hear all over the place that they have like a flooding never seen before, or drought they never seen before. So the, uh, many of these are caused by this uh, CO2 emissions that accumulate in the uh, atmosphere, which uh, started to change the pattern that the weather used to be. So this is, a, this is actually real. And then all these pollutants, um, it, of course, it's not all coming from cars, but a majority um, amount of this, uh, a larger amount of this uh, uh, CO2 comes from cars. So, um, okay. Uh, and uh, this one actually shows the temperature change over the last uh, a thousand years, of course, some of this may not be accurate, but in the past 50 years, we have seen a significant change in the uh, average temperature. It's about uh, 0 0.5 degrees um, in the past uh, 40 years, and then it's going up 0 0.5 degrees every 10 years, which can be really troublesome over the long term. And it's, it's an uptrend. It's not like going down a wall. So, uh, a few years back, starting from the Obama admi um, um, administration, a few years back, and we're pushing for electric vehicle development. And uh, around the world, so every OEM is working on it. Every OEM has a couple of models available. Um, and all this, some of those vehicles comes with autonomous driving capability, like the Tesla Autopilot. But what you're seeing, even though that you see this electric vehicles, they can potentially help with the environment with energy and also with addressing, uh, with autonomous driving, you can reduce the fatalities uh, due to car crashes. But when you see this range, uh, high cost, uh, low range and long charging times and other challenges are still within this uh, electric vehicle uh, industry. So our work is basically to address some of these issues. I'll give you one example, is we have developed this technology um, we can charge the vehicles using wireless power. So right now, when you buy an electric vehicle, you have to plug it into a wall or to a charger station to charge it. But with, with this, this research, with the outcome of this research, we don't have to plug it in. So basically, you can drive over somewhere, 
and uh, there's a transmitter uh, on the ground or underground and you'll be able to receive power so it's a charge. So with some of the dynamic charging capability, for example, if we build them at bus stops and so on, so the buses um, don't have to be uh, plugged in to charge. So you basically can save um, manpower for charging, especially for high power buses, save batteries, so save cost, reducing charge time. So this is eventually going to help with the uh, market penetration of electric vehicles. So OEM is working on this, and we work on this for many years. And uh, we started in uh, 2009, and this work has been really a collaboration between um, among uh, sponsorship from DOE and also um, automotive companies like uh, Ford and Denso. Okay. And uh, so this is another one that we're actually using the chassis of the car as a receiver. So basically now you're not going to have to build anything, you just use the chassis of the car to receive power. Now this is a long term, this is not going to happen tomorrow. But the research itself has resulted in publications and uh, patents, so hopefully you know, uh, eventually this will happen. And another ex uh, third example is that we're building this uh, battery management systems um, that can identify the faults. Like if your car has a battery that is overheating or there's a short circuit due to whatever reason, that we can identify these faults within 100 milliseconds. So that will give you enough time to escape from your car at least or reduce the performance of the car that you can drive to somewhere a safe place. So we'll tell you what kind of fault you have uh, and how long, how much time you will have before the catastrophic event will happen. So this is a research that uh, we've been doing. So this is a similar that we work this project with Ford, to how to identify the faults. And just, so those are the examples of, of what I do. So with the kind of work that we have done so far, we have published uh, five books, including this hyperelectric vehicles, sec second edition, and also the wireless power was just recently published. And this showing some of the work electric vehicles that we have built in the past, working with OEMs. And finally, this is my uh, second to the last slide, and our research is sponsored by NSF, RPE, uh, DOE RPE, and also companies like uh, Skywell, Goshen, Huawei, and Stigri, Denso, LG, and so on. So it's a bunch of companies have sponsored our research. And this is an old picture that I took a few years back of my research team. So I think I'm within the time amount, right? Time if you want to say <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's all I, okay. I, um, I have. And uh, if you have a question, so I'd be happy to answer. Really curious about this question. <laughs> yeah. So so far, the uh, aut uh, autonomous cars yeah. they are technically probably uh, quite good already. But what is the major reason to you think it is still not on market right now? Oh, the, the autonomous car. Well, the Tesla already has autopilot. Basically, uh -huh. um, on a highway, you can just let the car do the work for you. The major roadblocks are cost and uh, uh, legislation. Uh, Cost-wise, uh, the autopilot only works on highway. It doesn't work on normal roads. And the Google car works on highway and local. Yeah. And it can identify people and objects and other stuff. But the problem is they rely on a high-definition uh, GPS, which costs you about $160,000 uh, each. Uh -huh. And they use a LiDAR, which is better than radar. Uh -huh. It costs you another $40,000. So, and then by all the sensors that you add, cameras, and also they need a huge computer. It's not a, a ECU, it's not your laptop, but it's, it's huge. It's a big box with maybe water-cooled computer. So add it all together, it will cost you about $40,000 to $400,000 to buy a car. So it's not gonna work for you. So now people are working on deep learning with reducing the LiDAR, reducing the use of uh, high-definition GPS, and also you know reducing the Re improving the algorithm so that you can have a smaller computer that can do the calculation for you. Um, but it's going to be five years out, out you know, before the autonomous car can be really um, work. And another thing was legislation. You know, if we're in, in between the manual car and also autonomous car, if accident happens, who is, who is responsible yeah. for the faults? Uh, all kinds of things. There's no real uh, legislation is, is, is applicable right now. So we have to wait for it. 
Yeah. But once that happens, you're going to expect a lot of reduction in uh, car accidents, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Chris, uh, the, the supercharging system Tesla has pretty, pretty good speed. Um, right. how, how would these uh, wireless, wireless charging, charging yeah. how would they compare in terms of charging rate? Uh, a good question. The, the fast charging right now is not limited by the grid or the power, power electronics, the circuit is limited by the battery on the car. So when you fast charge the battery, it creates two problems. One is the overheating of the battery itself, so you have to cool them, otherwise it's overheated. And secondly is when you fast charge your battery, it reduces the, li the life of the battery. So if you don't fast charge, you can drive say 10 years, and if you fast charge every month, you can only drive five years. So it damages life very much um, in the process. Uh, but in my way, I'm doing is not on the battery side, so I'm doing the wireless charging side. So I'm doing the device, how to charge the battery. And so is the Tesla fast charging station. So from that perspective, we can do the same fast charging as, as fast as the fast charging uh, of the one that you plug in. Um, theirs is a little cheaper than what we do because ours involves the transmitter and then receiver. However, um, the wireless charging, when we design it as a fast charging, it actually can reduce the operation cost. Because in a fast charging station, you cannot plug in charge your car. You have to get there and somebody else will come because it's, you need a license. Uh, and I saw the fast charging station that w was built in Germany, the cable was so thick that a lady like yourself, you won't be able to carry it because it was so heavy. They have water cooling in, through the cable because it generates heat. So with wireless charging, basically you drive your car there and you activate it with a switch or a button and it's charging. So you don't need the, um, the manual operators for those systems. So I think it will be better uh, from many perspectives, but it will cost a little more. So all predictions about maybe 20% more in the system. Yeah, we have, uh, I think, a question somewhere over there. Yeah, we have one over there. Um, you know, I remember the uh, overheating of the batteries in yeah. the Boeing in the Super yes. in the 787, but I didn't real. I mean, you don't hear about catastrophic events with batteries, or I'm not. Oh, well, you probably are not in this space. Uh, they, this happens all the time. Tesla probably had a dozen cars burn since, uh, uh, you know, among the. Uh, they, they were hit by. Objects under. They were, they were, uh, some of them were hit by objects, like hit on a tree or in you know, an accident, but some of them just, just, just burned themselves. Oh. And the uh, vault, for example, then when you know, in the morning they got up, then the car, whole garage was gone and the car was burned. And in China, because China has the most electric vehicles deployed and probably have the lowest um, reliability in terms of uh, components. So they had like every, I, once in a while, the people post on the cars that it, caught fire and in uh, this uh, past August, there was 80 buses. Um, they were just burned all together. They were parked on the street at noon time and probably, I don't know why they parked at, uh, but they was burned um, down, like some of them burned down to nothing, just like a frame, frame left. So yeah, it happens all the time. It, it's much more it's much more dangerous than the, the, the gasoline car in terms of uh, uh, reliability and safety. The batteries, they are, they're just, uh, they can be overheated and they can get fire and, uh, and explosions. Yeah. Do we have another uh, Chris, one? Chris, do you have an electric car? Um, I do and uh, I don't, it depends on how you look at it. So I, I, I had a Prius, uh, it's not a pure electric, um, uh, but then um, the, yeah, so that's... <laughs> if you were to give us your advice for the top one and two electric car on the market yeah. right now, that's what important. would you say? I, I think the Prius is probably the most reliable um, car that, uh, that that's... Uh, they sold also the most uh, quantity in, uh, in the past like uh, 11 years. Uh, and then the second one I would recommend if it probably is um, uh, the Chevy, uh, the Chevy, the Chevy Volt. Uh, the Chevy Volt is a more also mature product, and then the Chevy Volt. The good thing about the Chevy Volt that you can charge and you drive 20, 30 miles or 40 at the most, and then but then it has gasoline, so you don't have to worry about losing. Like the the Nissan Leaf, you can only drive 80 miles and then you'll be done. So you, <laughs> if you forget to charge and then you cannot 
go anywhere. Yeah, those, those are, I think, the two cards that I would recommend. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Chris. And